Today I want to talk about the fact that if there's no expansion, there's no dark energy. And that's because dark energy was used to explain accelerating expansion. But since the Tolman test disproves expansion completely, there's no accelerating expansion either. Space and the universe aren't accelerating. They aren't expanding at all. And if you're not familiar with the Tolman test, I had a video on that and, and you can watch it. So increasing redshift was mistaken for expansion that was accelerating, requiring dark energy. But it's redshift that is the thing that's actually happening, the real evidence that we see rather than the theory. Expansion and accelerating expansion are just theories related to the redshift. So whatever material interaction between photons and matter that causes redshift could be changing with distance or location. So there may be some sort of interaction that decreases at larger distances. Now this brings about that there's three basic types of possible redshift interactions that we can look at. One would be direct contact interactions where the photon it essentially hits matter but somehow without scattering and that causes redshift. In that case you have a highly matter density dependent mechanism. So in an area of space with low density, we'll have low redshift, and with high density, we'll have high redshift. Now, another approach could be is you have an instantaneous global interaction with all matter, in which case the redshift will be proportional to distance because it will always have the same basic interaction with matter and the same amount of redshift. And then a third thing would be you have interaction that's not instantaneous but still global with all matter. It's limited by some velocity, say the speed of light, which means that the longer that a photon is traveling, the more matter it interacts with, in which case you would see an increase in redshift for more distant photons. And so that's not exactly what we see, um, so that doesn't seem to be the case. We don't have a speed of light limited interaction globally with all matter. Now it's possible you could have a combination of all three forms of redshift going on simultaneously, and that's something that needs to be investigated. So we could have redshift that's decreasing because there's a low density area of matter in the distance in which we're looking. In which case it can be highly directionally dependent. And this also means that a small data set such was originally used in the 1998 paper is not really appropriate for making broad conclusions about accelerating or decelerating expansion in the universe. And then since we're located in a large void called the KBC void, this void has a diameter of 2 billion light years, so it's huge. But that would mean that light coming from outside the void is going through an in area of increased matter density, so we would expect to see and increasing redshift at further distance just due to us being located in a void, which is the opposite of what Adam Reese and, and his associates published. So there's a chance that the dark energy was never needed to begin with because the data isn't significant. And that's something that Dr. Sarkar has been working on in 
after the Nobel Prize was awarded, they finally came out with a global database of supernova galaxies that could be used in the tests that Adam Rees did. And Dr. Sarkar initially found that there's only a three sigma certainty that the data, data was meaningful. And then he reevaluated it recently and found only a two sigma certainty. And with the two sigma certainty, physicists usually don't do anything with that. They, they wouldn't globally say there must be dark energy because we have two sigma certainty that there might be dark energy. It's, that's not enough certainty. So it's one of these things that might be going on, but we really can't tell. And it's made worse by the fact that most of the supernova galaxy is, comes, information comes from the local void. So we have this void that we're in where we get most of the data. And so we have no clue if that data is applicable universally outside our void by a large amount. So the data is, and the, the whole theory of redshift decreasing with distance is highly suspect. We, we can't really make a determination based on the data sets that we have. So we may have never even needed to go through all this dark energy mumbo jumbo to begin with. Even though for other reasons, like the Tolman tests, we know that dark energy doesn't exist. Now that said, there may actually be a force causing matter to move away from matter. And the reason I say that is there's one thing on a small scale that we know, an electron that is attracted to a proton due to electrostatic Coulomb forces won't actually hit it. At some point they don't attract anymore. And at that point you end up with the electron orbiting the, the proton. And, but we don't know how that happens, but it implies in, in a real classical mechanical sense that there's a force opposing Coulomb electrostatic attraction at some point. And that could be repulsion between matter. That's something we need to investigate if you want to model it as a force interaction where you have an attractive and a repulsive force. And then the second thing is if we look at inertia, if inertia is a self-induction effect where an object moves, it causes the quantum field to rotate and quantum field rotation keeps the object moving. If you have that sort of interaction responsible for inertia, that expands into an entire Maxwell force. It has Maxwell's equations without the electric charge. And as part of that force you have a matter repelling matter term. And in which case gravity as we know it is a composition of all these inertial forces and force terms along with some gravitational forces causing attraction. So there may actually be a repulsive force between matter. Uh, depending on how we look at the uh, interpret inertia. And since most physicists ignore interpretation of inertia, they don't know. But I think that once you come up with an accepted theory of inertia, you do end up with matter repelling matter. In which case, we do have a force we have to deal with. So, go figure. We have to gain a much better understanding of how redshift happens. What's the mechanism behind it? And is it proportional to distance or not? And then we have to come up with inertial forces and inertial force theory in order to understand that component and see how that relates to gravity and the gravitational constant g. So, 
again, physicists have their work cut out for them. They need to do their job, figure out inertia, figure out redshift, and then we can go from there. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you'd like to learn more about my research on quantum field theory and particle theory, I have some books for sale on that. Uh, I, as, as I said before, I may do one on cosmology in the future. I'm learning more ab about it all the time. So I want to thank my supporters on Patreon and PayPal. I really do appreciate it. And thanks for watching.